Apple has finally released Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Uh, after years and years of all those Final Cut Pro fans asking for it. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my opinions regarding uh, Final Cut Pro for the iPad, the features that it has, the features that it lacks. And for those of you who say that I'm an Apple fan or an Apple fanatic, you don't want to miss this video because I am going to throw jabs left and right at Apple for this uh genius idea. So let's get to it. Okay, before I begin, I want to uh, indicate why I was out. If you may have noticed that I've been out for about uh, close to a month or maybe two. Uh, the reason for that is that I was actually supposed to have vacations a two-week vacation planned by the end, the last two weeks of April, but Destiny had other ideas for me. I needed to have emergency surgery. I'm still recovering, but I'm back. I'm going to try to have videos coming out, uh, especially since a lot, of, a lot has happened regarding tech uh, lately, so I'm going to try to ease into it. I do have a little bit of trouble breathing, so bear with me. Uh, but let's get right into... Uh, the subject for the Final Cut for iPad. iPad users have been begging for this for a long time. Ever since the first iPad Pro was announced, they've actually asked for Pro apps to go along with it. Uh, but Apple, until now, did not give them the option for Final Cut Pro. Uh, it is very limited. One of the limitations that it has, for example, I don't plan on getting it because my iPad which is the uh, iPad with the A12X chip, does not support Final Cut Pro, does not, is not able to run Final Cut Pro. And I do, uh, and I do the uh, quotations because I don't think that's true. Or maybe it could be true, but I don't think so. Uh, if you don't remember when they announced their last operating system, the iPad operating system, they had a new idea for the multitasking. And first they said that that feature was only coming to uh, M1 processors or the M family of processors, they got so much backlash that they actually added it, added the A12X and the A12Z chip. I'm pretty sure that the A12Z chip is able to run Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Considering that the A12Z chip is the same one that they used for the develop, developer kit, the Mac Mini's developer kits when they were doing the transition to Apple Silicon, so it ran Mac OS. I'm pretty sure it can run Final Cut Pro for the iPad, but they decided not to do it that way. Anyways, getting back to uh, the Final Cut Pro, that's one of the limitations. So if you don't have an M processor on your iPad, you're gonna have to buy a new iPad. Uh, the cheapest one is the iPad Air if you're gonna buy it new. Obviously, I'm pretty sure that you can get it for less if you buy it a refurbished or something like that or from Amazon with some discounts pretty sure you can find something cheaper but officially from Apple the cheapest one would be uh, the M1 iPad Air there's an issue with that also the M1 iPad Air the cheapest one is 64 gigs and you're gonna need a lot of storage because if you even if you plug in an external storage and you have all your videos there you cannot edit from there you need to pass them over to your iPad and then start editing your videos. You cannot edit directly from external storage. You need to edit directly from video that is stored on the iPad. Speaking of video that is stored on the iPad, the Final Cut Pro version for the iPad does not recognize every version of video formats that there are out there. To give you an example, there is a camera called the Red Raw. Uh, they don't support that format of video. So you cannot, if you have a Red Rock camera and you want to edit your, your video because uh, you're in a worldwide developers conference or something like that, you don't want to take your laptop, you want to do something a little bit easier, you can't do that because they don't support it. So you're going to have to uh, either make sure that if you don't have a camera, you buy a camera that records in the format that the iPad uh, Final Cut Pro for iPad recognizes or vice versa. You're going to have to 
uh, make sure that before you pay for Final Cut Pro for the iPad, make sure that the format that your camera uses is one that the uh, Final Cut Pro app recognizes. The last thing is obviously the price. The price is $5 a month. It's a subscription-based app. And I'm going to leave my opinions regarding subscription base at the end. Uh, or you can pay an annual fee. I think it's $50. If not, I'll place the correct amount right here. This is Apple's test to see if their subscription based apps work. If they work, I'm not going to be surprised if more apps move in this direction. And they start moving other apps, maybe even. Final Cut Pro for the Mac will be subscription based. Uh, right now, if you guys don't know, you buy Final Cut Pro for the iPad one uh, for the Mac once, and you get all the updates afterwards. So it's it's really inexpensive when you really think about it. But uh, that's the idea that they had. Anyways, Final Cut Pro for the iPad is at a cost. My opinion is that considering that it has so many limitations and uh, it's going to take buying an iPad that has a lot of storage, that's going to make it almost as expensive as a Mac, just buy a Mac. And it has the keyboard and everything. Uh, they did add this wheel that a lot of people who edit video actually use a physical one for. That is, That was a good idea, I thought, from the app. But honestly, just for that, it's cheaper to just buy the wheel for you to edit on Final Cut Pro on your Mac. It's all, it's, at, the end, it's, at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, I don't like the idea, as, as you can tell at all. I think this is a, uh, an idea from Apple, a test balloon from Apple to see subscription-based apps. And if it works, then they're going to start moving other apps that they have to subscription bases also. So my opinion is don't buy it unless it's absolutely necessary for you. Uh, it's very limited. I don't know if it's because it's the first edition or what, but it's very limited. The version to edit video for Adobe on the iPad is uh, covers a lot more, has a lot more features. So I would rather go in that direction than going in this direction. But uh, that is just my opinion. If you differ from that opinion, go ahead and drop it in the comments down below. While you're down there, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell so you can get notified when we have new videos. As I always say, if you have a Gmail account, you have a Google, uh, you have a YouTube account. Go ahead and sign in either on your app or your favorite web browser, youtube.com. Subscribe. It's free. It just takes a few seconds, and it really helps out not just me, but any other YouTuber that you like their content. Subscribe. Help them grow. As always, we're available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and obviously YouTube at J.R. Abrams Tech so you can stay up to date with the latest news and rumors about tech. Until next time.